notice what Sister White said the Pope would do in our day. And she said this way back in 1884. She said that the Roman Church now presents a fair front to the world, covering with apologies her record of horrible cruelties. She has clothed herself in Christ-like garments, but she is unchanged. Every principle of popery that existed in ages past exists today. The doctrines devised in the darkest ages are still held. Let none deceive themselves. The popery that Protestants are now so ready to embrace and honor is the same that ruled the world in the days of the Reformation, when men of God stood up at the peril of their lives to expose her iniquity. She possesses the same pride and arrogant assumption that lorded it over kings and princes and claimed the prerogatives of God. Her spirit is no less cruel and despotic now than when she crushed out human liberty and slew the saints of the Most High. Now check out this article. I'm just going to read a small excerpt from it. The headline reads, Pope to ask forgiveness for past faults of church's children. It says, on March 12th, the first Sunday of Lent, John Paul II will publicly ask the Lord's forgiveness for past and present faults of the children of the church. For the first time in history, John Paul II will confess the sins committed by Christians through the centuries. Specifically, he will admit the sins committed in the service of truth, which they declare are intolerance and violence against dissidents, religious wars, violence and abuses of the Crusades, and violent methods of the Inquisition. The Holy Father, which, by the way, is a blasphemous term, but they say that the Holy Father will also express the repentance of Christians for the sins committed in relation to the people of Israel, which they say was contempt, acts of hostility, and silences. Well, first and foremost, please understand not a single Christian committed any of these crimes. Basic reality is, and we are living in the last days, so we know this now because the prophecy says the man of sin will be revealed in our day, None of the popes and the prelates of Rome are Christians, none of them. Have you seen some of the videos that I've been putting up in regards to how not only were they caught having satanic services in the Vatican, they're making buildings in the shapes of Satan, you know, the serpent that he uh, took form of in the Garden of Eden. They use the name of our king, Jesus, for the sole purpose of slandering him so that in the last days when the majority of the people on earth have come to accept Catholicism as Christianity, wherein all sorts of sins are sanctified so that when the current natural disasters get much worse, as prophecy predicts, will get much worse, the Pope, under direction of Satan himself, who then claims to be Jesus Christ on earth at this time, will demand the obedient Christians of the Bible are worthy of persecution and death for refusing to keep the pagan Sabbath of Sunday holy. As prophesied, they will blame us for the calamities because we refuse to keep Rome's Sunday Sabbath that they say by keeping will stop the calamities. When in fact those calamities have nothing to do with the Pope's climate change or global warming or even global cooling for that matter. These worldwide disasters were prophesied. They are the final signs that herald the arrival, the second coming of Jesus Christ. And also notice that the present Pope, because they're trying to keep the love fest going, he's also apologizing for the sins of the church, claiming it again was Christians that did what they did, further confirming the prophecy of Ellen White. Ellen White not only prophesied that the Roman Catholic Church will apologize for her past evils as a way to save face and gain global approval, which we have seen fulfilled right before our very eyes, she also prophesied that the Protestant people will accept this apology and actually honor the Pope. Every Protestant church, and this includes the Seventh-day Adventist church, have openly declared the Pope to be a holy man, in writing no less, and some on camera, when not too long ago, these very same churches all in unison declared him to be the man of sin, or the son of perdition, or even Antichrist. What shocks, but at the same time blesses my heart right now, is how the emails and calls I have received from Seventh-day Adventists who have watched these videos, who not only left their churches due to the truth presented here, all of them told me none of their pastors ever told them about any of this in all the years they have been sitting in that church. Now do you see why they edited Sister White's books? 
Now do you see why it's so important you get your hands on the original books that can only be found at vbates.com? Had the people of God in the Seventh-day Adventist Church known about her real message, or even some of the prophetic statements made by her about our day, you know, I would think that many more Seventh-day Adventists would have left the church long ago. Thank you for watching. God bless.